You and I have both, uh, I think we're both investors in Grok. Let's put that up front on this. But uh, the company has come out of its shell and it's had in just some really explosive moments um, over the last couple of quarters. Got a really nice uh, readout on the all in, made some big acquisitions. But also, Pat, uh, we're seeing some big milestones. Yeah. So Chamath Palihapitiya is, is uh, an investor. He rarely talks about his investments, but he's super... Uh, excited about this one, and I think it's for it's for good reason, and and that is the LPU, uh, which uh, is essentially the chip that Grok uh, has, is very performant uh, versus NVIDIA uh, GPUs. And you know, Dan, we have um, debated kind of ASICs and and their pluses and and their minuses and. The trick with uh, an ASIC-based accelerator is, is if you can put a software layer, I call it the magic magic API, so you can get two to three generations out of your chip. NVIDIA's got a really good TCO uh, equation because everybody knows that you'll get, again, two or three generations of something uh, out of the chip today uh, and, and in the future. A perfect example is that um, you know, GPT was uh, was trained on on the predecessor to the A100, not you know the H100 or even the A100. So, uh, with that said, big news: they have seventy thousand developers and nineteen thousand applications on their uh, on their cloud, and their cloud is is basically this was a an acquisition of Definitive IO CEO Sunny Madra. Uh, was out there very quick um, acquisition here, but what this this acquisition did it it enables uh, it lights up the capability for developers to go in and not just test workloads, but uh, use them to train and infer workloads. Now, long term, right? You want to stand this up on a an on prem uh, cloud or something, let's say in a colo at, at Equinix, but uh, you know, Dan and I, you are all, you and I are always looking for the, you know, we know AMD with its GPU is is um, is competitive. Uh, Intel in 2025 with Falcon Shores, with a little bit um, of ASIC juice uh, involved, is is a next player. But which ASIC is going to make things happen? Right, Intel Gaudi, uh, LPU. So. Exciting stuff and exciting progress by the company. Yeah, I think I saw Jonathan Ross uh, share something. I don't know if it was on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'll have to find the link to it, but where he basically said, we're not selling chips anymore except to, you know, specifically to some government defense requirements. And he's going to focus 100% on this cloud capability with the, you know, with that acquisition. You know, the company is really starting to stand up and make this, ex- you know, extraordinarily accessible to developers. And you saw the numbers from Sunny Madra, you know, 70,000 developers now are you know, developing 19,000 apps uh, on Grok Cloud. Pat, I mean, this is, it's an incredible bit of progress. And the need for alternatives, you know, I, I just, you know, I understand that, uh, you know, that NVIDIA is an incredibly powerful company that builds great stuff. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, I just think the idea that it's zero sum. We've got this weird world where everybody thinks everything's zero sum now. It's like going to be all one or nobody. You know, look, AMD is going to take a part of the market with their GPUs. The cloud providers are going to build homegrown silicon that are going to be powerful and usable for certain workloads. We're going to see CPUs on Xeon. Pat, I shared something yesterday about a company that's, you know, with with you know. With AMX and Xeon, you can do a whole lot of inference on a CPU, and we will see a lot of inference being done on a CPU, Pat. And Grok has built something that's very uh, specialized. Now, the company continues to talk about it can do more than language, but what they're doing is they're basically making it extensible, they're making it available, and they've shown that they can make it extremely performant. Um, And so we knew that from the beginning, Pat. There was a reason that both of us felt this was investable when we got involved in it. And, uh, you know, we continue to cheer for it. But also, I think the market needs to pay attention. You know, there was a time I think both of us were concerned that Grok's uh, future was was going to be challenged. But in the last few months, they've come out swinging with innovation. Um, they seem to be refocused, repurposed, and the market is finding and identifying their technology. 
Uh, and we're hearing a lot more about it. And that kind of buzz is good. And by the way, frothy, frothy valuations in AI right now. I mean, look, I shared something the other day. I think one company in eight weeks went from a $300 million round to a $2 billion valuation on the same company without creating any additional revenue. VCs are back. The froth is back. I know we had a little bit of a sell-off this week. Crypto bros are back. The money is flowing in. The AI uh, exuberance is here. But the nice thing about GrokPad is this isn't exuberance. It's a real company, real technology. Uh, it's, it's, it's foundational, and it's in a space that needs more competitors, chip makers.